And march on we do. We have reached lesson 30. Who knew that such a thing was possible? Uh, in this screencast, we deal a little bit with the so what, a little bit behind the okay, so I have a power series and that's moderately exciting. What do I do with that? So, if I may. Um, when we were on our last screencast, we played around with this guy. Uh, and if you remember, this was the sum of an infinite geometric series where the first term is 1 and the common ratio is x. The general term is x to the n, and we go on. And we said that this series converged on negative 1 to 1. Since this fraction is equal to this power series on this interval, we can also find a series for other functions. For example, we can find a series that converges to this on negative 1 to 1. And we can find a series that converges to this on negative 1 to 1. And we can find a series that converges to this. Well, sorry, not necessarily negative 1 to 1, not necessarily negative 1 to 1. But we can find series that converge to these functions on certain intervals. So think with me for a moment about how you might do that looking at this series and playing with this stuff. And I think for a moment. Did you hit the pause button? Did you actually think about it? Are you just waiting for me to do it? Think about it. Okay. So some thoughts for me to share. This is the most obvious one because this just replaces x with 3x. So we're just going to replace all the x's up here with 3x's. And that's 1 plus 3x plus 3x squared plus and so on. Uh, we should note the interval of convergence here is not from negative 1 to 1 uh, because the x gets replaced by the 3x. So, right? This implies that that is the interval of convergence. So on negative one-third to one-third, this power series converges to this function. By the way, this function is not particularly interesting. This particular function is not that interesting, uh, but again, it's generated in the same way. We're going to replace x with negative x squared. If we replace x with negative x squared, we're in really good shape. Uh, so again, just substituting in, we've got 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus and so on, so that the nth term is negative x squared to the n, and it just goes on and on and on. And you will find, for obvious reasons, that this converges on negative 1 to 1. This one's a bit of a of a pickle because this series has a 1 in this spot. So I'd kind of like a 1 in this spot. And the way to do that is to divide everybody by 2. Now I've got a series that kind of looks like this. Uh, I'm going to look at this as a geometric series where the first term is 2 and the common ratio is x over 2. So that's first term plus multiply them together plus uh, multiply by x over 2 and so on so that the general term is x to the n over 2 to the n minus 1 and so on. And it won't be too hard to see that because this is the common ratio, 
the interval of the convergence runs from negative 2 to 2. Now, of the three series that we found here, this is mildly interesting. This is moderately interesting because of the algebra that's involved, but this is really interesting because this is popped up before. This is one of those things that's popped up in our course before. Where did it pop up? Wasn't it the derivative of something? Oh, yes, it was. Oh, yes, it was. So if I ask you to find a power series representation for inverse tan of x on negative 1 to 1, you say to yourself, wait a second. I know stuff about inverse tan of x. I know that the inverse tan of x is the thing whose derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. I know that if I take a series for this function and integrate it, I am golden. Well, what is this series? Well, it's this series. So we're going to integrate 1 minus t squared plus t to the fourth minus and so on dt. We're going to integrate. So how do we do that? Well, we integrate term by term. We integrate these terms one at a time. And, and what do we get? We get x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 minus and so on. But then what happens? So remember what happens. We take an antiderivative. We sub in the x. Okay, I can do that. But then we have to sub in the 0 and subtract. And the trick with all of that is when we do this, there is some constant in play. There is some constant that I don't know what it is. Um, except that I really do. And why do I know that? Because I know what the inverse tan of 0 is. The angle whose tangent is 0 is 0. So if I sub in 0 all the way through here, I have to get 0. And that means that the constant has to be 0. And so the inverse tan of x is x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 minus and so on. Uh, nth term, this will be interesting, uh, it's negative 1 to the n plus 1 times, how do we want to say odd number, odd number? Uh, generally, the way we do that is to do 2n minus 1. 2n minus 1 will generate your 1, 2, 3, and so on. It'll generate your odd exponents. That's one way that we go at it. Uh, you could use 2n plus 1 and just start with n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2. You're fine. But this is a power series representation for this function on this interval of convergence. Uh, while we're on the topic... How about a series for the natural log of 1 plus x? Well, I sort of have a series I know something about, right? I mean, the derivative of this is this. This is almost our given series. Right? It's a geometric series where the first term is 1, and the common ratio is negative x. Right? This is our power series for 1 over 1 plus x. So the natural log of 1 plus x 
is the thing whose derivative is this. It's the integral from 0 to x of this ah, really? plus this series. And again, we use t's here rather than x's because x is the upper limit up there. Can't have x's in here if x is the upper limit here. So what do we do? We're going to take an antiderivative term by term, sub in x, sub in 0, and subtract. Antiderivative term by term. Right? And there's some constant in the front that we don't know what that is. Really, the constant used to be in the back, but because this goes on and on forever, we put the constant in the front. So what do we know? We know that if we sub 0 in for x, we get natural log of 1, that's 0. So when we sub in 0 for x here, we have to get 0, which means that that constant is 0. So the natural log of 1 plus x is just x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4 and so on. And again, that only holds on negative 1 to 1. It only holds on the interval of convergence that was true for this series up here. Well, if you can integrate series, you can certainly differentiate series. Find a power series representation for 1 over 1 minus x squared on negative 1 to 1. Well, that's interesting. Interesting because if f of x is the series that we started with long, long time ago, Guess what its derivative is. Go ahead, guess. You'll never guess in a million years. You'll never guess. Right. So we know that 1 over 1 minus x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on. So to take the derivative, we just take a derivative term by term. Derivative, derivative, derivative. Guess what all those terms look like? All those terms look like n x to the n minus 1, and it just keeps going. So in reality, we have in reality, we have one main series from which we can generate many series. And this is one of those lessons where you want to pick up this skill. You want to get good at recognizing that a series is familiar, and we can use that to do things. So that's all I've got for us. I don't really have an OYO to play with for you right now. Um, wait, hold on. Nope, I really don't. So we'll get together and talk about these when we gather next time. I look forward to seeing you.